Amen is right. Thank you so much for being here today. Welcome to Standing in the Gap 2023. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I hear all year long just how, just how bad our leadership problem is in the church. And I'm sure that is true to some degree, but when I see this many men come here on a Saturday morning, and I see this many men who are interested in spiritual matters, and I see you traveling from, in some cases, very far distances, I want you to know that I am greatly encouraged already. And I think you should be as well, because that is why we're here, is to fellowship as men of God, to create that bond and that relationship, but it is also to grow and encourage one another when it relates to leadership. I've got a number of announcements and things that I need to say before we get started, so let me not waste any time. Uh, first of all, let me just say what a wonderful start we have had with that singing already. Thank you, Jonathan, for leading us in that singing, and thank you, men, for blending your voices together. Um, let me also say that we have three speakers that will give a total of six lessons today. We will have two periods of singing and two meals. Some of that's already commenced. And so we plan to be out of here by about 2 o'clock today, but let's don't worry about that. Let's worry about the time we have together. Jeff Archie is one of our speakers, and he will be coming up first in just a few moments. Uh, my, I will also be a speaker today. And then also we have a third speaker by the name of John DeBerry. Many of you already are familiar familiar with John, but let me make this note. You might be looking around and you don't see John yet. I won't give away too many details other than to say those storms that were happening in parts of the country yesterday uh, made him get in quite late. And in addition to that, there are some other uh, inconveniences that have popped up. John will be here, but he will be here at 10 o'clock. So don't lose heart. He will be here, and he will be here before his first lesson. And so we look forward to hearing our brother Jeff and in just a few moments, we look forward to hearing John. And let me make a few housekeeping announcements just to get out of the way. Uh, if you've been with us before, you know that the, this is something we say every year, that here in this part of the building, every part of the building here except for the fellowship hall, you men can use both men's and women's bathrooms. And that has nothing to do with the gender ideology, okay? <laughs> And you can use those bathrooms, and, uh, but when you go to the fellowship hall, only use the men's bathroom. We have ladies back there working, and we want to leave at least one bathroom av available for them. Also, there are materials on some of the tables in the foyer. Look at those materials. If any of them seem interested to you, please take those. We hope that by the time you leave, there is nothing left on those tables. And the other thing that I always get questions about is what about the recordings? Is this going to be live stream? This is currently being live stream on the Lake City Church of Christ YouTube channel. And not only will you see the entire event live streamed if you want to share that now or later, but each lesson will be separately uh, archived later that you can go back and listen to. And so for that reason, we're not pushing uh, the, the burning of CDs. We're asking you to go and look at our YouTube channel for those lessons if there's one you want to reflect back on. And so we have two lessons coming up. I'm going to ask Victor Eskew here in just a moment to offer an opening prayer for us. Victor is the preacher for the Oceanside Church of Christ. And so we'll have him lead us in a prayer. After that, Jeff will get up here and start us off. And so Jeff's first lesson will be reflecting godliness requires action. And this will be taken from our key passage of this week, of this day, and that is James chapter 1. Bibles, let's prepare our minds and uh, let's get ready to learn from God's Word. We're going to start with a word of prayer by our brother Victor. Let us pray. Our Father and God in heaven, as we enter into thy presence, we come realizing that Thou art the true and living God, and the only God. Our Father, we are thankful that Thou art our Creator, that Thou hast created all things in six days through Thy powerful Word. Father, help us always to tremble in Thy presence and to give honor and glory unto Thee. Father, we're thankful for the Lakeside, Lake City congregation who has uh, supported this particular event. We're thankful, Father, for the leadership here that sees the need for such time as this. 
And help us, Father, as we enter into these sessions that we will open up our hearts and our minds and make application of all things in our lives. We are thankful for each speaker. We pray for them. We are thankful for their godliness, for their courage, and Father, for their willingness to de dedicate their lives to the cause of Christ. Heavenly Father, we are mindful that we live in a very sinful world, a dark world. And Father, it is encouraging to see individuals here who are lights. And help, Father, help us to shine our lights brightly in this world. Help us to be salt that can preserve this world as well. Heavenly Father, we know that there are times when we do sin against Thee, and we are grateful for the precious blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful for the ability to confess our sins once we've repented of them and know that forgiveness is available on our behalf. Heavenly Father, help each one of us to be men of God. Help us also to be uh, true soldiers of Christ. And Father, help us to have the courage to stand. Help each one of us to see the need to evangelize and to preach the gospel uh, in every place that we can. Heavenly Father, help us to rid our lives of sin and iniquity and help us to be holy and righteous and godly in this present world. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, brethren. Good morning. As we are reminded from the words of Paul unto Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 and 12, applicable to us today, but thou, O man of God, Flee these things and follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession among many witnesses. So today, O men of God, let's go to work. Let's go to James chapter 1, our lesson text of verses 21 through 27. We're going to read a little bit and we're going to study a little bit, if you will. So grateful to be here to see you good brothers from Florida, from Georgia. We are delighted to be part of you today. And it has been a number of years since I have been here. So grateful to see all of you. I see a lot of old friends. I see a lot of friends that I hope to make. TJ told me I could take just a second that it would be permissible and applicable. But with my work at International Gospel Hour, we are expanding our television into the central Florida market over a super channel that has great coverage up to Gainesville and from coast to coast in Florida. Now my permission or my part today is not to talk about International Gospel Hour. I say that only to say they allowed me permission. I can talk with you all day. Get with me. It may be in your area. Use it for your evangelism. And I'll be glad to talk with you about that. I am going to stay here until after 2 o'clock. I will stay as long as you stay. But I'll tell you what, brethren, I've got about six to seven hours to head home to see my beloved bride. And I know from events like this, you lay it aside, you come, you give it all you got, and it come two o'clock, you're going to be heading home to see your beloved brides. But I will stay, I'll answer any question, help you any way in the world. It's great to be together. You know, in the last line of that poem in the booklet there, the man in the glass, he says, you may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass. But your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass or the man in the mirror, our theme, if you will. Now, brethren, let's not cheat ourselves. We realize there is a greater mirror of which we are looking into today, God's Word. The physical mirrors tell us what we need to prepare, what we need to change, and what we need to work on. God's Word, the spiritual mirror, tells us what we need to work on spiritually. And as we talk about reflecting godliness, I'm from 1 Timothy 6 and verse 11 and 12 of being godly. Godliness is obedience to the commands of God, embracing His blessings, loving His compassion, acknowledging His justice, and serving Him, presenting a pure religion to the world. We must be and we must reflect godliness in all that we do. And so today as we think about renewing the inward man as commanded in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. And as we note in Romans 12 and verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, 
which our brother T.J. will talk about in his two sessions. Not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Brothers, with that being said, let's go to work. Let's strive to be more godly than manly. Let's strive to be more godly than manly. A God-made man will always do better than a self-made man. A self-made man ourselves. Number one, as we look at verse 21 of James 1, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Written to brethren, Fifteen times in five chapters, James refers to them as brethren. They are Christians. They are brethren. They are already obedient to the gospel of Christ. They are individuals that need to go on unto perfection or maturity. Hebrews 6 and verse 7. So think about this. He's reminded them in verse 17 how they were begotten with the word of truth. And not only that, a wonderful reminder for us. Brothers, let's never forget the day we obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, did not Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, did he not mention the gospel that he had preached unto them, the gospel that they had received, the gospel that saved them, and the gospel that would continue to keep them saved if they would keep in memory what he had preached unto them unless they had believed in vain. And so we want to build and we want to grow from there. If you're following along with the handouts and all, you've got three points there. Aside goes the world, except the word of God, and able to make a greater change. Aside goes the world, lay aside. When you see that phrase lay aside, we have to lay that aside. I was visiting with Brother D. Berry before I came over here, and oh, what a night he had. Y'all be good to him. He sent me a message, and I said, Brother John, I beat me in the lobby at 8.15 in the morning. He wrote back, he said, Brother Archie, I'm still on the tarmac. He was sitting in Charlotte. And I got to thinking, what's going on? Because I didn't fly, I drove down yesterday, and I got to thinking, well, I went and I took a map of what was happening in Charlotte with the storms and how that line was running. And I sent that to John. He told me this morning, he said, brother, when I saw that storm, he said, I just calmed down because I knew why we weren't taking off. You see, he could lay aside his fear, his concern, and what's going on. Brothers, we need to lay aside, which means we make the move. You see, they had laid aside when they obeyed the gospel. They had repented, laid aside that past, obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They had repented of their sins. They had believed in Christ and repented, confessed his name, were baptized into Christ. We'll see more of that in a moment. But when you think about repentance, they knew how to turn away. But he also tells them to lay aside those things, the filthiness, the wickedness, the overflow of wickedness, to reject the world, to love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, 1 John 2 and verse 15. So we, aside goes the world, lay aside the world. It does not dictate what we do. It did not dictate how we obey the gospel. It does not dictate how we walk within the gospel. Accept the word of God. That's what they did. When they accepted the word of God, they had obeyed the gospel. They received the word of God. In 1 Peter 1, 22 and 23, they had purified their souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. I reject the life that I was living, and I receive a better life when I obeyed the gospel of Christ. Now I'm going to continue to walk in that path. Beloved, we have no shame in presenting God's plan of salvation each and every time we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ within our assemblies. There's always somebody there that has never heard the plan of salvation or there is a good possibility. Jesus taught us to believe. 
He taught us to believe in John 8, 24. He taught us to hear and understand in Matthew 15, 10. He taught us to repent in Luke 13, 3 and 5. He taught us to confess Him in Matthew 10, 32. He taught us the importance of baptism based upon our belief in Matthew 16, or rather Mark 16 and verse 16. He exhorted the church in Smyrna to be faithful unto death, Revelation 2 and verse 10. Brethren, when we extend the God's, when we extend the plan of salvation, God's plan through Christ, it's because Christ extended his plan of salvation and we need to let people know that and not shy away from it somebody says well they hear it over and over good sometimes think about all we do over and over reminds us and makes us better you see I reject my life receive with meekness a better life the scriptures are source of salvation that's what Jesus said to search them in John 5 39 and then we, uh, we are able, rather, to make a greater change. Now, I like that word able there. Receive with meekness the implanted word. He's telling these Christians, you lay aside the world. You receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, I like that word able. That word able, when you get down and you research it, it's a form of the word dunamis, translated many places, power. We get the word dynamite from there, dynamo, dynamic. I mean, those are all words that really exhort, exalt, move us forward. The Word of God, we're able to make a greater change. Not only does it blast out the sin, but it builds the soul. That's the implanted Word of our Lord. So when we reflect godliness, first of all, we are saved according to the Word of God and we keep building that man in the mirror. Will you look at verses 22 through 25 with me? Let's not only look at action from the implanted word, but action that improves our lives. Brothers, we've come today to study together, to find things that we can use to help our lives. Let's work on us here, and when we leave, we're able to do other things. Verses 22 through 25, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Brethren, are you with me? We need to be doers of the work. Be doers to put into action. You know, children understand that. For example, brothers, talk to me for a second. I'm looking for two words. Talk to me. I'm going to do something, and I want you to talk to me. When you see me do this, give me just two words. You'll know what it is. Ready? My man. Come on, brothers. Wise man. Yes, yes. Now, brothers, don't tell me you've gotten so old you've forgotten that song. Uh-uh. No, no, no. No, no. You know, children understand. From the teaching of that little song, the wise man built his house upon the rock, they understand that we need to do what Jesus asked us to do. We learned that in an early age. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 reflects that. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. We are a doer. We exhibit how God has saved us, we reflect our godliness, our salvation. We demonstrate. Now let's, as doers, let's think about being determined. You see that idea of being determined, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Psalm 19, 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 that I alluded to moments ago. When we think about that verse, therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, 
that the things which are not seen, the things that we see, they're temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Not only are we a doer, but we are determined to continue being doers and to grow as doers and to grow and continue in that right direction. Do you notice what James says? He who looks into or looks in the perfect law of liberty, who looks into it. The word there is akin to the empty tomb in John 20 and verse 5 and verse 11. When John ran and stooped or looked into the tomb. And then in verse 11, Mary looked into the tomb. They looked and gazed. It's kind of like this. Uh, those of you that, like me, are blessed with a little additional sight, have you ever stopped to look at something? And I've often wondered why I do this. But have you ever stopped to look at something and you do this number? <laughs> well, I'm thinking instead of doing that, why don't I just stay right where I'm at? But we do it. What does that mean? We want to get a closer look. This idea of looking into the perfect law of liberty. We want to get the closer look. We want to lean into that and get a good look. An idea of continuing. And I love this. Keep it close. Brother D. Barry was in the lobby this morning and he was making his notes because his luggage it is to come had his primary notes in it. He said, Jeff, I don't know why. He said, but I put this big, huge Bible that I had in my other luggage and happened to have it. And he was making notes to make sure that he would be ready. He was looking into that. Brethren, we look and we dig into that. The perfect law of liberty. It's complete. It can accomplish all. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It gets it all done that the man of God may be complete or perfect, mature, complete unto every good work. How thankful we are to see the Word of God. I concur with Brother TJ to see a room full of brothers that have driven many miles and desire to want to grow and it's going to help your local works when you take it back home. When I pulled in, I could not find a parking place. I had to finally found one out back. That was one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. I saw several parking on the grass, but there's room enough for the barbecue truck out back. Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> hey, if you feed them spiritually, feed them physically. But brothers, are we together here? We're saved. The implanted word made a difference, obeyed the gospel. The strength that we continue as doers, as we're determined, going in the right direction. Godliness. Saved. Godly living. Strengthened. Godly living. And now, thirdly, action that impacts other lives. Where have we come? First of all, the implanted word that made a difference in my life. That I obeyed it, took action. Then in turn, the impact of growing within. But brothers, we've got an impact to the world. Verses 26 and 27. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless or vain. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Notice, first of all, our religion is before God. It is before God. Considering additional texts is Acts 26, 5 and Galatians 1, 13 and 14 of the life of Paul. Religion reflects the guidelines of belief, of action, and the mode of worship. It is an external devotion. It reflects our godliness. What is within is now expressed without. 
When you look at religion, that Latin term meaning to bind together again, we're bound together to our religion, our God-given religion, as Paul was the Jews' religion. And such means he embraced, or means that he embraced all that is within, that we do the same. And what we bring before God must be accepted of God. Now we know that from Cain and Abel. They both offered up sacrifices. Cain's was not accepted, but Abel's was offered by faith, Hebrews 11, 4. And so what we offer unto God, what we grant unto God. You know, one of the wonderful passages we note is Micah 6 and verse 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? But don't miss out verses 6 and 7. You should have it there in front of you. I think I put it in the handout. But if we come before him with burnt offerings, we come before him with thousands of rams and all this, we can bring everything we can, but if we're not right and we're not coming before God as we should, then we need to work on some things. You know what amazes me when people say, well, I'm against organized religion. You know, sometimes I, I, I'm getting where I don't argue with people. I like to ask them questions. What do you mean? What do you mean by organized religion? I'll tell you what they mean when you really get down to it. I'm going to just use simple old Tennessee country boy vernacular. They don't want to get up and go to church on Sunday morning. They want to do it that way. That is it. They want to do it their way. Well, you see, when we want to do religion our way, it's not God's way. We do what we want. But if we're going to reflect godliness, then we need to do it as God commands. As God commands us to worship. Because pure religion, first of all, before God. What am I expressing to Him? And I need to know. Then before others. I need to keep myself unspotted from the world, to love not the world, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. To not fellowship the darkness of the world, Ephesians 5, 11. Now, our brother TJ is going to bring those thoughts in a moment, not only after me, but later as well, as he deals with reflecting godliness in an ungodly world. But folks, brothers, we need to make certain that our lives are reflecting godliness before others. Others will see it, our households and all, which we'll talk about more this afternoon but also before the world. You know, it's amazing how in the New Testament they went and took the gospel to all the world. Colossians 1 and verse 23 said, Every creature under heaven had heard the gospel. How beautiful that is. In Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, when a problem arose in the church, they didn't ask for a sign-up list. They didn't ask for committees to talk about it for six or seven months. The apostles got up and said, we're not leaving the Word of God in serving tables. We've got our work, and we need to do our work here. And when they appointed those seven men, and those seven men served the widows in the daily administration, the Bible tells us in verse 7 how the Word of God multiplied and the disciples grew. Quick lesson on a side note here, brothers. When there's a problem arises, stand up, fix it, address it, and move on. Because I promise you, there's going to be another challenge around the corner. It's called life. Address the needy, the fatherless, the widows and their affliction. That reflects 1 Timothy 5, verses 3 through 6. But with a view of helping, how can we make that difference? To walk in the light as He is in the light as Christians, as brothers, as saved individuals. 1 John 1, 7 through 10. But yet as a light to the world, Matthew 5, 13 through 16, that others may see God in us. So you put all this together, brothers. The implanted Word brought action to our lives. Then we grow and we mature to strengthen our lives. And godliness in serving others and making a difference in this old world and a world that sorely needs Jesus Christ. Reflecting godliness from the word that saves, that strengthens, and serves. And to God be the glory. The late Brother A.M. Burton, in his book, Gleanings. Brother Burton was a most interesting individual, very successful businessman in Nashville, if you note the last phrase there in the booklet, the true religion, 
is the religion of faith, hope, and love. The true religion saves. The religion of holiness and righteousness, that strengthens. The religion that prays for and works for the doing of the will of God on earth, here and now, as it is done in heaven, that serves. That gleaning brings forth a reflection for us all. And brothers, let us reflect godliness in our actions and how we live. Because there's a world out there that will challenge us. And with that being said, we're going to address now the challenges that can come after us. As our brother T.J. Gifford, the evangelist here at the Lake City Church of Christ, will come and we're going to enter right into lesson two, reflecting godliness in an ungodly world. Good brothers, let's give our attention now to our T.J. Gifford. Amen. Once again, good